So, good morning once again everyone and welcome to the recorded class. So, last class we discussed about the various types of forces and we also discussed about the different contact forces and the different types of non-contact forces. So, forces as we know are known as contact forces and non-contact forces. So, in contact forces you have muscular force and friction and in non-contact forces you have magnetic force electrostatic force and gravitational force. So, contact forces are those which has a touch. Contact forces are those which has a touch or a physical contact and non-contact forces are those where there is no kind of physical contact. We discuss about the types of contact force, we discuss about muscular force. The force which is caused by the action of muscles is called muscular force. Activities such as uh, bending, movement, breathing and digestion are called muscular force. And the point where the force is applied on the object during contact is called as the point of contact. We had discussed about friction. Friction is also a contact force because without the contact the frictional force will not be exerted on each other. So the force responsible for the changing of state of motion is called friction. And it always acts in the opposite direction. Suppose you are going ahead the force of friction will act as the backward position. So, the action of the force of friction is always reverse. That's why when you, when a peddler bicycles, if a peddler, sorry, if a cyclist stops pedaling his bicycle, then the finally, the bicycle comes to rest. Why? Because of the friction that the road is providing to the bicycle. And it arises due to the contact between surfaces. It, if surfaces are rough, then there is more friction. And if it is less, then there is, if the surfaces are smooth, then there is less friction. So that's why we can walk on a very rough floor, but in smooth floor we cannot walk. We slip because uh, the friction, the force of friction between the, our feet and uh, the floor is very less because the surface is smooth. And then in non-contact forces, as we can see here in this particular uh, slide, we have discussed about non-contact forces, we discussed about magnetic force. Magnetic force uh, does not exert pressure on each other and without being in contact one of the magnets it exerts force force on the another magnet so that is also a uh, magnetic force and so you can see in the picture uh, magnetic force so force is applied between two magnets so if the opposite poles are arranged the north pole attracts south pole and then if like poles are arranged then they repel so opposite poles attract each other and the light poles they repel each other so another force we discussed about electrostatic force in the last class as we all know that a force exerted by the charges. So whenever we rub a charged body with an uncharged body, then the uncharged body has, has some charges. For example, we used to rub the balloon or a, with a comb with our hair and then we used to attract the pieces of paper. So the pieces of paper, they got attracted. Huh. So when we rub uh, means comb or balloon with our, with our hand, then it gets charged. That, that particular charge object, it attracts the uncharged particles. For example, if we go and you know put our uh, means uh, arm here in the screen, then the arm here also tends to rise. That is because of electrostatic force. And at last, we discuss about gravitational force. Uh, attraction of objects towards the Earth is gravity and all. Every object in the universe has attractive force in it. Uh, so these are the different types of contact force and non-contact force that we discussed in the last class. So now we will come on to pressure. Now we will come on to pressure. So what is basically pressure? Pressure is, if I tell you accurately, then pressure is actually the force which is applied at a particular area that is perpendicular. So when the force, when the force is applied on a particular area, pressure is actually the force which is being acted on a particular area. So that's why the the uh, formula of the pressure is pressure is equal to force by area, means force acting per unit area or thrust acting per unit area. So if we see the formula pressure is equal to force by area, so for pressure what we have, pressure is directly proportional to the thrust, pressure is directly proportional to the force, that is more the force you give, more is the pressure, less the force you give, less is the pressure. So pressure is the angle of force. So depends on what amount of force. Suppose when you try to you know, push something, you need to apply pressure. So when you apply pressure, at that time you are pushing it. 
So as a result, you are giving more and more force. Pressure is inversely proportional to the area of the force. Remember students, area. So if the area is more, then the pressure is less. But if the area is less, the pressure is more. How? You know when school when the school students they take bags, the bags I have broader straps here. Because the area of the straps has to be more. That's why if you take more weight on your bag, then the pressure on your shoulder will be less. That is a question that uh, school carrying bags have broader straps. Why? So school carrying uh, bags have broader straps so as the pressure is minimized. So as a result of that, they have less pressure. And uh, you know, uh, while uh, means poking the nail, sorry, while poking the nail in the wall, the uh, area occupied by the nail is very less. So as a result, less pressure can also give you more less force can also give more pressure. So it depends what amount of force are we acting on what amount of area. So wherever the area is maximum, pressure is more. For example, students, we can uh, we cannot stand on our one feet for a long time. We cannot. Why? Because pressure of the surface area of one feet is very less. As a result, the pressure exerted being is more. But we can stand on our two feet very very confidently. We have no problem in standing on our two feet. Why? Because two feet has giving us more area. As a result, pressure is being exerted less. So similarly, uh, when we sleep, we cannot sit for many times. But when we sleep, we can sleep very peacefully. Because when we sleep, our whole body is occupying that area. So surface area increases when we sleep. So we can sleep for 8 to 10 hours, but we cannot sit for 8 to 10 hours. Because while sitting, the area where we are sitting is less. But when you sleep, the area exerted, area occupied by us is more. So more the area, less is the pressure. Simple. So here are some examples we have. Heavy trucks have 6 to 8 tires. Our four-wheelers have four tires, but heavy trucks have six to eight tires so as to increase the area of the tire with the road so that the pressure on the truck becomes less. Camels can walk easily in the desert as compared to other animals because they have broader feet. So other animals cannot walk in the desert but camels can walk in the desert properly because they have broader feet. Because as because they have broader feet they have more surface area and the more the surface area less is the pressure. Skiers use long flat skies to slide over the snow. When people slide over the snow, then uh, broader pedals they use. Why? Because broader pedals gives them more area. So anywhere, wherever more the area, uh, larger the area of contact, less is the pressure. So skiers use long flat skies. This helps the, sky, the larger the area of contact, the lesser is the pressure and that helps them. Then as I already told you that uh, I mean school carrying bags are provided with broader straps so that we can carry the bag nicely. So the pressure exerted on our shoulder is less because the area of the strap is more. So we come to unit of pressure. The unit of pressure is Newton per meter square. Okay, why? Because pressure is force by area. And SI unit of force is Newton, whereas SI unit of area is meter square. So SI unit of pressure becomes Newton per meter square. And Newton per meter square is nothing but Pascal. It's 1 Pascal is equal to 1 Newton divided by 1 meter square. And you will be very happy to know that liquids and gases, they also exert pressure. Liquids, a bottle of liquid, he is also exerting pressure. Because if I till, till down the liquid, he is exerting pressure below. And if I open this lid, then the liquid falls. So the liquid also is exerting pressure. All air exerts pressure on all objects. The air which you are living in, it is exerting pressure in all the objects and hence we feel the atmospheric pressure within us. So air also exerts the entire pressure on us. So this is uh, about pressure. So one second I just uh, recapitulate. So pressure is the force per area acting per area. Pressure is going to force by area. It is also defined as the thrust acting per unit area. For pressure we have pressure is directly proportional to mass. Sorry, pressure is directly proportional to force because more the force, more is the pressure and pressure is indirectly proportional to the area. Means more the area of contact, less is the pressure. So increase the area of contact, your pressure becomes less. Examples of day-to-day -day life, we discussed about heavy trucks. Trucks having more tires has more pressure. Sorry, trucks having more tires 
have more area of contact with the road so the pressure is less camels can walk easily in the desert because they have broader feet so that the pressure is less and uh, school carrying bags are provided with broader straps so the pressure on the shoulders is very less so this is all about pressure then unit of pressure is for newton per meter square and 1 newton per meter square is 1 pascal so this is all about pressure students in the last class we discussed about contact and non contact forces so pressure ka notes i will be giving in google classroom write their notes and after we finish this chapter we will start for revision so this will be our last chapter in before our term one examination and then we'll conclude the chapter so thank you very much have a good day all the best thank you